All right, so we bought Lethal Lightning an extra 30 seconds. Uh, <laughs> he is running a little bit late. He just sent me a message, though, saying that he will be five minutes late. And uh, how late are we? Are we late? Are we more than five minutes late? No, three minutes late. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think uh, where KJ and I were talking and didn't realize that the the time had passed our um, our start time because I think we were uh, subconsciously just waiting for lethal. And <laughs> I uh, we noticed he was late when we saw, oh, it's time to start. And then I, yeah. I checked Twitter and lethal message saying he'd be five minutes late. So we gave notice. He's still late, but he gave notice of being late. And that, that's that's really all you can do. If you're going to be late, you're going to be late. Life happens. It, it, it's cool. And um, Jade Shadow says it took every ounce of mental strength I had not to continue. I feel like I'm late on this chat because that sounds like a response to something. Um, oh, no, I guess she means not to continue watching the show. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah, no, that, that was tough for me, actually. I um, was just rewatching with, with Jojo here, our, our little honorary um, show puppy. And um, we, we, were, we were snuggled up in bed watching the dub, actually, because so now I've seen it once in Japanese and once in English, of the premiere episode. And um, the second episode automatically started playing, and I was, like, looking for the remote, and I couldn't find it. So I ended up seeing, like, 30 seconds of the, um, the second episode, but I wasn't really paying attention, so I, I couldn't even really tell you what happened. I knew that it was following Waver, the first scene, but that, that's all I know. And uh, we will get into who Waver is uh, momentarily, I suppose. Uh, maybe well, I guess we'll just um, do some introductions and stuff, just because um, Lethal is uh, still not here, and I think I think most of you know who he is. Um, so yeah, KJ, I guess um, g give us a little introduction. Tell tell us who you are and and why why this show was um, well, why this show was the one that you wanted to pick for us to cover now that Attack on Titans wrapped up. Yeah, um, so I chose this show for a couple of reasons. Um, the first big one uh, was just that this was probably the first anime I watched where I was like, ooh, anime, that's like, ooh, okay, that's the good stuff. Because before then I had watched like the original Full Metal Alchemist, which was pretty good. Um, I watched like Oran High School Host Club and like some comedy stuff and like it was fine. Uh, but this this is the show that really got me uh, into anime as a whole in like a big way where I was like watching and I was casually invested. Uh, but this is the show that really pushed me over the edge uh, and, and, and got me really into the art form. Um, also because I, I am a big fan of the kind of Greek classics and this show is very much styled like a like a classic Greek epic and so I'm a big fan of those stories uh, so the story connected with me in like a bunch of different ways and I thought it was a good kind of uh, jumping on into just because um, it's a Senin sort of a darker fantasy much like uh, uh, kind of has those dark fantasy elements similar to Attack on Titan. So it's not too out of the wheelhouse. Where if we were talking about Disastrous Life of Psyche K, that would be like kind of odd, you know? <laughs> but, yeah. Well, I mean, I was really pushing for the Yuzaki's Chan Wants to Hang Out show, but uh, no, no one was biting on that one. Um, <laughs> I, I guess she's too controversial with the, with the boobs. Uh, Lethal Lightning, how are you doing? Yeah, good day. Sorry, I'm a little bit light. I was running a little, little bit light. Uh, it, stuff. it's okay the the biggest downside was that we were we realized we were talking and just waiting for you to join so that we could then look at the time until showtime and then realize we were already three minutes late <laughs> but uh <laughs> other than that it's it's, it's totally fine you, you haven't missed anything at all um kj was just introducing himself and why he chose to do this show um uh, to follow up attack on titan I'll tell you what, if this first episode's anything to go off, he made a fucking good choice. Yeah, it was um, really solid. Um, I, I've seen it twice now, um, as I was yep. kind of telling the chat. Um, once in Japanese and once in English. And um, I enjoyed both, actually. I thought the dub work was actually quite solid. Um, I just, uh, KJ actually pointed out that um, Commander Shepard himself does the voice of, um, let me not get these names wrong, hold on. I want to be, like, looking at them. Um, <laughs> Kiritsugu? Kiritsugu is like the, the mage killer guy? Yes, Kiritsugu Emiya. Okay, yeah. See, I'm going to be terrible on the names today, even though I've, yeah, um, <laughs> I, I've, 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 I've seen it twice now. Um, there's a lot of names, a lot of K names, and uh, some of them are blended together. Um, so, yeah, it's Kiritsugu. Karia is the, the character that I really liked. 
um, who had the um, the niece that he wanted to save from from the worm pit. And then Same. I really Car- liked him too. Carrier, Carrier is the 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 monk guy, or like not not monk, but like the church guy that was like the sidekick of who seemed like he was the main church guy. Okay, yeah. So I'll just go ahead and just pop the names off real quick, if you don't mind. Okay. So Kuritsugu Emiya is the mage killer. You have Kotamine Kire, who is the member of the church that gets brought in by Rise Kotamine, okay. his sort of adopted father, if you will. Uh, and then you have. Let's see if uh, I can get some visual aids here. Hold on one second. All right. I'm just going to put the. Oh, don't remove. No, oh, full screen layout. How do I just add this? Ah. Oh, wait. Yeah, wait. I know what I'm doing. Okay, cool. Um, so Kuritsugu is, um, not, not this woman, uh, <laughs> the, the man that she's talking to, um, this guy, the one, um, ponderously staring out a window while, is it his baby that's being born in this scene? Yes. Okay. Or is that a spoiler? So, there is, no, there is a baby. A spoiler. That, that's his child. Okay. Yeah. He, he is in a relationship with Iris Veal von Eisburn or just Irie as he calls her. Uh, and that's a woman in the bed and her daughter is Ilya, um, Ilya von Eisburn. And then... Ilya and Ilya's mom's boobs. <laughs> <laughs> X-ray girl just gave me a side eye. <laughs> but... I'm sorry, honey. There's boobs on the screen. I can't, I'm not going to pretend there's not. Yeah. What the fuck? I'm, I'm only human. Um, I, I can't seem to get on Karitsuke. <laughs> I, I'm trying to, to, to not, but I actually, I did test to see if I could get Netflix going on here with, um, just a, oh, God, God, I wouldn't do it. It'd over. probably get taken down. Well, no, like, I mean, this, I'm, I'm running this on Netflix, but I was trying to just get it in a browser window. And when you share the screen, it's nothing but a black screen that comes up. So there's Ooh, piracy. Um, share protection. Which, uh, yeah, again, like, I think that the fact that I'm not sharing audio, like, come on. Like, why, how are you going to make the claim that what I'm doing here isn't transformative? Like, I'm not playing the audio and I'm talking over every second that I'm showing. Or, like, we are. Um, but, yeah, so this is um, Kuritsugu, who is uh, the mage killer. And um, I, my theory is that he's the protagonist because... He's the first character we see and the last character we see in the premiere episode. That is all I'm going by, though, because I've watched <laughs> nothing past this episode. I have no idea what any of these characters' motivations are. It just seems like, hey, this guy's a father. Um, the mage killer line maybe sounded a lit, little bit dark and ominous, but it, uh, like the way he's presented doesn't seem evil to me. Um, the guys that I think are evil, I guess we'll go, um, we'll let... Uh, KJ, keep going with his name. So you were saying that um, that up. Oh, that, okay. Yeah. So, so... Needs to go chase after Harley. Hold on one sec. I gotta not let my puppy jump and die. Hey, Jojo, don't jump. There you go. All right. So yes. Yeah, so you continue. have uh, Tokiomi Tosaka, who is head of the Tosaka family. He is on the left here. In uh, red. Yep, in red. And Kotamine and Rise are on the other side. Uh, and then you have. Um, his wife, Aoi, and his daughter, Reen, uh, and his other daughter, Sakura, which we will get into. Um, hey yo, hey yo, And so uh, that's sort of your main cast. And then you have, of course, uh, uh, Karia uh, uh, Matao. Who so is wait, the... is Karia's niece his daughter? Because she's Sakura, right? Yeah. I'll, the same no, I'll get into that. And I'll explain some like lore stuff that you might have missed just because, again, this episode actually sets up a lot. Uh, it, but it actually is pretty quick to do so, even though it is like 48 minutes. Um, this show and this episode specifically very well uh, kind of establishes this and sets up the fact that it really is a show about framing mm-hmm. um, and about um sort of how things are viewed by the different people uh and so you really want to pay attention to whose perspective we're looking at so how is the scene being framed who is talking what are they talking about but what are they really talking about so is it kotamine is it kire is it his father rese is it tokiomi is it karia is it Irie? like who is being framed in the scene uh, and I specifically bring that up because we're going to get into the lecture scene here in a bit. And that's something that will definitely be uh, m- 
kind of a callback <laughs> later. Um, is that your dog, Mark? Yeah, yeah that's oh, Harley. Okay. She's she's freaking out. Um, I, that's why I was kind of muting on and off because oh, okay. she, she was really going nuts a minute ago. But, uh, okay. uh, I don't know. There must be people in the hallway. So hold on one second. Okay. Uh, well, while you're here, Lethal. Yeah, uh, go on. <laughs> one of the things that I love about this scene is the way that it sort of sets up expectations to subvert them later in the episode. And that's a really great way to put the audience kind of on edge in the sense that, again, talking about framing is like, what is actually going on here? Because you have them sort of circling around Kotomine. And they're sort of like Rise and, and Tokiomi are sort of scheming to win the Grail because Rise is supposed to be neutral. He's supposed to be a neutral outsider. He's supposed to be somebody who is not going to be biased. And the show immediately throws that out the fucking window of being like, "So listen, we got this scheme going on, and we want you to be a part of it because we're going to steal the Grail out from everybody else." <laughs> and so it immediately changes kind of the framing of how the church is viewed because they obviously have you know, their own, uh, <laughs> their own stake in the grail war, even though they're supposed to be outside observers, they're supposed to be neutral. And we already have somebody from the church who's going to be a master and somebody else who's supposedly, <laughs> supposedly the neutral observer who's already like, and I'm joining the Tosaka family. We're going to win the grail together. And so it immediately is just like, okay, framing is important because they proceed to circle around uh, Kotamine in this scene. Mark, if you want to slowly fast forward through this scene and kind of get to what I'm talking about. Sure. So um, let's just uh, let's just talk about um, Kyrie Kotamine for or Kotamine Kyrie for a second. So yeah. he is not a mage, or like he was a mage, and then kind of like left the order because they were like saying something like, "Hey, how the hell did you even get one of the stigmata?" And, yeah. Uh, so I was like, he, what, what was the deal with that? Because, I mean, the way the scene, I guess, is initially presented, it seems like, okay, they're just, like, team church, and, like, he's kind of the main guy, and um, and Kotomine was, like, the, I don't know, sidekick or something to that effect. But then they were saying, like, oh, yeah, but you're not supposed to have one of those. How did you even get one? And he's like, I don't even know. Like, so, yeah. do you, like, am I, am, I, am I close with, like, how that was supposed to have been presented? You're on to something. Like... You're on to something, and I can't tell you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. But like, okay. Let's let's just, I guess, note that I realize that was important for reasons. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess before we move on, real quickly, um, Roger H with the super sticker. I guess I can scroll back to see what it was. I'm willing to bet it was a thumbs up, though. Um, here, let me. Not oh, called the over, thumbs up. It's called the Mark the Cyborg. The Mark the Cyborg. Yeah, I've, I've claimed the thumbs up as it's a uh, Mark the Cyborg dog whistle. <laughs> 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 but, um, and uh ten dollar super chat from rocks oh actually here i'll throw um roger h is up on the screen yeah i guess uh, in Streamyard it doesn't ever show the stickers sorry roger but uh we we know the love was there and uh rock steady for ten dollars says good choice kj i quite like this one and the series in general i was hoping you guys would continue these streams with attack on titan on hold Technically, this is a different show, and I'm saying that most specifically because um, with as busy as she's gotten with her job uh, producing Nerd Rotic, X-Ray Girl will not be on every episode. Like she, she may be able to join us for some. Um, she did not watch the first episode though within this week, um, so she's going to now have to catch up on two episodes if she wants to join us next week. And so um, you're I, telling I, me we're doing an anime podcast without an asian person yes <laughs> oh fuck yeah cultural appropriation but my my asian person is um is right next to me and hold on one second hey up up there we go and this is a vietnamese puppy also jojo is korean but um mm, okay i think we can so get away with that technically we've, we've got a couple got a couple asians Okay, so we'll get X ray girl confirms Harley is Asian and JoJo is Korean. JoJo, stop being Korean. I mean, stop barking. <laughs> <laughs> and Shtick says anime is gay. <laughs> anime gay. Jade Sato says neutral. Oh, yeah, no, it's just total how, bullshit. How, how very neutral of you, Harley. <laughs> All I know is my gut says maybe. Um, anyone catch that from, uh, wait, hold on, can I, am I hearing anyone? Hello? 
Hello. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sorry, I hey, thought I went muted I for was a second. Mu- I was but muted. But no, did um, yeah, I think you guys were both muted. <laughs> I was like, no one, no one laughed at my Futurama reference, but <laughs> or acknowledged it. I was like, oh, oh. Um, anyway, but yeah, that was the the war against the neutral planets, and they're they're all like dudes in gray with shaved heads, and <laughs> it's like, should we attack? I don't know. <laughs> they would they would constantly be reacting to things neutrally. But yeah, so I think everyone has agreed that um, the, the priest dudes are, are not neutral. Um, or at least the, the two that are interacting with... Uh, wait, where's my character list again here? Um, Tokihomi to- Osaka. Yeah, Tokihomi. Okay. I actually, I have the Google um, sort of... Oh, Jojo, come on. Um, the, the Google like Fate Zero characters thing up here. So I'm hopefully going to get fewer names wrong than in Attack on Titan. Though, um, yeah. And uh, to be fair, Christopher Rosella said um, Mar- Mark's canceled for telling someone to stop being Korean. First of all, she's my dog. Second of all, she knows she's Korean. Third of all, it was kind of a mistake. <laughs> um, and it, I guess she, I mean, she is a poodle. So I don't know. Are poodles actually Korean? It's just her breeders were Korean. Um, they, they're a very sweet couple too. And they, they have a lot of, lot, of, lot of very high quality poodles. And, um, yeah, okay, so I guess, um, I don't know, was there anything else about uh, this scene that we wanted to kind of go over, or these characters that you think is noteworthy from this episode? Uh, I'm, I've said my piece, Lethal. Is there anything you wanted to add? Uh, Lethal is muted. Uh, sorry, sorry, I did a mark. Uh, not, not overly, not, not in this particular scene. Um, I've only seen the episode once, and I saw it last night before I went to bed. So it's all fairly fresh in me, but... There's a few things down the line I want to talk about a bit more. This was kind of just like a good intro. Yeah, and I think that this um, this is sort of also where we get the premise of the show to a degree because um, it's here that it, we kind of hear like, okay, like what are you going to win the Grail? Like who's going to be like fighting in the Grail Wars? And I'm sitting here thinking, I was like, so are these, is this going to be like a war? Like is it a large scale war where there's like factions fighting and stuff? And you pretty clearly find, or pretty quickly find out that it is more like a contest from what I've gathered. That it's, there's champions that are each summoned by these mages that are chosen with those like red stigmata on their, on their hands. And um, they can then summon what basically seems like a stand from Jojo to me. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know if anyone watches Jojo Bizarre Adventure, but, um, or like a persona from the persona games. It's not, they don't turn into that thing. They just kind of have that thing fighting alongside them. And I guess they control them. I don't know how directly though yet. And I guess that's something that we'll find out as the, um, as the show moves forward. Uh, KJ, I guess I like in my more or less, correct there or am i yes am i getting this way off yes you're you're correct so there are seven masters and seven servants and so the masters are the ones with the stigmata on their hand and they are chosen by the grail to fight in the grail war war so they are chosen by the grail and you have um these uh masters who then summon heroic servants and the heroic servants are the ones that do the fighting pretty much so you have a a setup to where there's like lancer archer rider you know there's like different classes of heroic servant and uh and that's uh that's pretty fun (laughs) so essentially it's a it's kind of like a death battle uh kind of like a death game uh where you've kind of like there can be only one and that person wins the grail and the grail is supposedly an omnipotent wish granting device so if you get your hands on it it'll it'll grant you a wish that you know yeah yeah. anything Kind of like uh, seeking a Dragon Ball or the Seven Dragon Balls. <laughs> um, yeah. The uh, the question I had there though that like when you say it's sort of a like I guess that was a Highlander reference for anyone who doesn't watch uh, the <laughs> 80s classics that star Christopher Lambert as a Scottish man, like, uh, which is hilarious because he's like the most French actor that's ever lived, and uh, he's he's playing a Scotsman in, in the Highlander, uh, but. Uh, the, the whole deal in that was um, um, there are mortals. You have to cut the, uh, the heads off another. If you cut the head off another immortal, you get essentially all of their strength. So as the immortals kill each other off, the, the kind of slogan that the, the villain uses is there can be only one. 
and he is essentially trying to hunt down all the other immortals so that he can become all powerful. Spoiler alert at the end of the movie, Christopher Lambert's character, who's Connor McLeod, the Highlander, um, kills him and then gets his power. Uh, then there were sequels. The sequels weren't very good, but the original is quite good. So if, if this is, oh yes, the Scottish Spaniard, uh, I think actually, um, Sean Connery's character was actually supposed to be Egyptian, um, not Spanish. <laughs> so I'm Egyptian. That, that, that's even better that, uh, that, um, yeah, the, the most Scottish person in existence did not play a Scottish character in I'm the Egyptian. Highlander. And, Do you know what uh, I found out about Sean Connery just the other day? His um, son, right? was in that god awful wishmaster free movie oh really i I, didn't yeah. even, I wasn't even aware sean connery had a son who acted but anyways yeah. I, I guess i i did that long um rundown of the highlander but i forgot to ask my question so kj you know <laughs> like if um is there are like factions though here where like a, a couple of them seem like they're from different camps and they're they're they would work together but is it like temporary alliances and if it came down to the two of them they'd have to fight or how does that work? Yeah, more or, or less. Yeah. More or oh, less. Oh, okay. So they're gonna, like, and trying so to every out. single one of these people, except for one, is going to die. Maybe. Or uh, yeah, or like that is, as far as the premise dictates, I guess. Like, I mean, that was the biggest spoiler question you could have asked. Well, yeah, I mean, like, well, I, to be fair, I didn't, I didn't find out who. Like, but, um, but it was more that like it's, theoretically the premise of like battle royale. And the Hunger Games is the same deal, where it's like there's oh, there's all these high school students on an island or in an arena, whatever, fighting, and only one of them can live at the end of the day. But in both of those films, more than one people live, or more than one person lives at the. I guess spoiler alerts for both Battle Royale and the Hunger Games, then. But um, in, in neither of those cases do, is it only one person from those games that survive. Um, so I, I assume that the same could be a possibility here. My question was more about is the premise, even if it comes down to two of you and you two are friends, you're going to have to kill each other or is it like, no, no, no. As long as your team wins, you're good. That gets explained. Okay. All right. All right. Um, you're I not found it pretty ironic. I find it pretty ironic how, um, it's the priest that gets the assassin. Oh, there's a reason. Ooh. And he had it already, too. Like he, he so is it? Well, do that? Can you just summon your person whenever your stigmata comes up, or do you have to summon it at a certain time? Because I noticed that like the assassin was kind of just already following him, and that that actually kind of threw me off because I was like, oh, so he's already got his, like. Like, how does that work <laughs> or, or is it just like once the stigmata shows up, you can then perform your ritual and summon the servant that, that you're fated to. And that's another thing. Is it just like you get the servant you get, or do you try to summon specific ones? Cause it, oh, it's, I'll explain that actually in this episode, cause it's actually revealed. So if there are certain things you're unclear on that are revealed in the episode, I'll go ahead and just tell you. Yeah, like I'm, I'm willing to bet I'm going to need some clarification on a few things. Like even though having watched it twice because I don't have the uh, hindsight of how the premise unfolds. Oh, like I said, a lot of this is me just trying to figure out, okay, what, what, how does this universe work? What kind of story are we telling here? And um, yeah, but piecing that together from just one episode is, is tricky. But uh, yeah, so I mean, is it, do, you, do you get a specific summon or do you, do you try to summon one but you, you may have end up getting a totally different one than you expect you it get... seemed like at the very least saber going to kiritsugu was something that surprised him well okay I'll, what i'll say is that you get your servant based on the heroic artifact so when waver steals kanith's artifact uh, later in the episode remember when he bumps into the guy who's like yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. This that's an artifact that goes to that specific servant so when he does the ritual to summon the servant it's based on the relic you have so i'll just say that they were surprised about something else in that scene but we'll get to that okay so if it's based on the relic you use does that mean he wouldn't have got that stigmata if he didn't steal that relic or does that happen afterwards maybe Okay, because uh, like, I mean, like he did, he kind of like wakes up and he's like, oh, like the grail chose me. He's like, awesome. It's like, okay, cool. But like, is it that you, 
or, or oh, I mean, again, this could be spoiling stuff. If you just, if you're just a random dude who isn't even a mage and you stole a relic, would you then get a stigmata and have to summon a servant? Maybe. Okay, so it's, it's very heavily tied to the relic, I suppose. Let me just say this: most of your questions will be revealed in the next episode, which is why I separated them. Okay, so this is clear proof that I did not watch ahead. This is um, the premise of this show. You can see um, Lethal and I kind of shooting in the dark, trying to see if we can figure out what's what's going on. With, <laughs> and I, uh, with I get to be like condescending and smug about it the whole time. Yeah. Maybe he gets, he gets to see maybe. Yeah, that's why you got to be on uh, on camera so you can like sip tea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to get a camera set up just for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess here now. Uh, so are we ready to move on to our next uh, sequence here with uh, Yeah, yes. Karia talking to his sister. I imagine his sister who is married to. Um, is it the? Is it someone in the Tosaka clan, or or is it actually Toki Tokiomi? Yeah, that's Tokiomi's wife, Aoi. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, so Karia is the uncle of Tokiomi's daughter. I Daughters, thought this I guy's whole, um, his whole plot that's gone on was probably the most interesting of a lot of them, to be honest. Yeah, like, I think he is. He's psycho dad and or... like all the, the fucking torture den and all that type of stuff. Well, I think that it's an interesting juxtaposition of like evil surroundings and what seems like a good person because it like his his motive is by at least from this episode the reason he wants to be in this context to, this tr like competition trial whatever you want to call it is far more altruistic than any of the other characters like he he's the only one who's doing it for completely unselfish reasons yeah, but it seems like he's also gone about getting his power in the most like fucked up and evil way. So it's it's kind of neat because it's like, well, this guy could end up being the main villain, but also he could be the hero of the series, like de depending on on where they take it. But but then because... again, his dad might have a point by saying like, well, you didn't do training for all these years, so you're way far behind. So we kind of got to do these sort of fucked up rituals to try and catch you up or even give you the slightest edge, yeah. regardless of how snuffed out they are. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I guess we'll see later on that the the things they do actually are like like pretty pretty messed up. But uh, I just, I, I immediately found myself, or, I mean, granted, it could also be because like I am an uncle, I have a niece and a nephew, and if one of them were in the situation where he finds his niece... I would probably be willing to do whatever I possibly could to to save my niece. Um, I guess in this context, so they're both nieces, but either one of them really. And um, um, sorry, go ahead. Okay, so I'll go ahead and interject here uh, just to go ahead and clear up some confusion. Karia is not related to Reen or Sakura. He is not their actual uncle. They call him that. He's known oh, them since okay. they were born, and he's always been a part of their life. So they call him Uncle Karia because he's such a close like essentially an uncle but not blood uncle yeah yeah like so, an uncle by respect essentially yes Aoi is not his sister oh okay. uh he yeah. is yeah the only people he the only people he's actually related to is zoken zoken is his father so he he is oh, a member okay. of the matau family and so he's an a, a, a surrogate brother i guess sakura because she gets adopted by the mataus uh but the only reason that that happens is in this scene where the wife explains oh, okay. like hey when he karia asks aoi he's like where is sakura like what, what where's sakura i want to give her this necklace and then rin just kind of shuts down and is like um she's not uh, my daughter she's like anymore. yeah she's not my sister and, and Aoi's like yeah she's not my daughter anymore and he's like what did you do and he's like well zoken came with us came to us with a request and we happily accepted and that will be revealed as to why later um, but Karia does not react well to that revelation, which is why he immediately goes to his dad's house and immediately he's like, what are you doing? Um, yeah. So, but like if, if Tokiomi is Sak uh, Sakura's father, why would he allow that to happen? Like I said, it will be revealed. There's a very specific reason. Okay. But is he in on that or does he not even know? Cause it, it seemed like the way Aoi was talking about it, it seemed like he knew. 
Yeah, he's the one that instigated it. Like, Zokin came to him because he's the head of the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, the red on his clothes are not just indicative of the family of the family colors. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's, he, he's evil. <laughs> no, they even describe him as ultra right, right, right wing, like Kutamina Kiri. I believe in this episode when he's talking about all the masters. No, it's Karitsugu, I think, in this episode. He's like, he's the epitome of ultra right wing. So like yeah, it's 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 pretty yeah, funny. So <laughs> selling selling your daughter to a magic competition is like a, a super alpha and cap move. It's like there is a reason about as and cap as you can get. It's like hey, how much how much money are you gonna give me for my daughter? <laughs> there's there, there's a reason for that. He and I'll just say he didn't get paid. There's actually a reason for it, and he actually is trying to do the a good thing. Everybody in this story is a hero in their own mind. And so no matter what twisted fucked up shit they get into and oh boy, are we going to get into it? They all believe they're doing what's right. Everybody, everybody has their own motivations. Everybody has a reason for doing this and everybody has a reason they were chosen by the grail. And that's really how Gin Iribuchi, who is the author, for those of you that don't know, really likes to twist the knife into people because you get attached to everybody because you really get invested in like everybody's story and when people start dropping, you're like, no, no. And you're like, oh, but he had to die. Oh, but I don't want you to die. No. And so like every time somebody dies, everybody, every time somebody gets hurt, you're like, no, 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 wait, don't do that. Because everybody gets their motivation fleshed out. And this is Karia's, where Karia really just wants to help Sakura. He really wants to get her away from Zoken. And the whole reason he left his family is because he hates his family <laughs> because they're fucking evil. Yeah, they they seem really bad. Like it was to the point that when he calls Zoken a vampire, I like took a second. I was like, um, is he actually like are there vampires in the show? <laughs> like I, I and I honestly still don't really know what the answer to that is because Zoken Maybe <laughs> He he does seem like he could be a vampire. Like I mean, look at the man. He doesn't seem human, or at least not entirely. This is Zoken, by the way, everybody. In case you, in case you're one of the few people who just decide to say like, hey, well, let's see what this discussion's like and see if I want to watch this show. Um, I would say after one episode, yeah, I, like I I really wanted to keep watching it. I'm I'm trying to stay strict to to KJ's watch list so that um, I don't say, oh, I know what happens and. Uh, I just think that like what it, it's kind of the same reason I didn't um, look at any Attack on Titan spoilers before our um, our discussion on the the previous show that uh, will be coming back for season two uh, later. So uh, that's that's little Sakura, and um, she's she's in a bad spot. This is, this is one of the reasons why Karia is um, doing whatever he can to save her because um, Zogan essentially put her in a pit with a bunch of magic demon worms that infuse you with magic abilities i i guess is kind of what i gathered from it yeah you and, are correct uh, you, you are correct mark 100 percent. they're the uh the yeah jade yeah crest worms that's what they're called um they enhance magical abilities by draining life force um and lovely so that is essentially his family's magic so most families are are proficient in certain kinds of magic you will learn what the tosaka family is really good at later on in the show uh not until like episode 10 i think so you'll have to sit uh sit down and wait for that one be patient we'll get to it um but you kind of learn what each uh family kind of their magical affinity you kind of have different kind of magical affinities and like kanith as you learn is it is it it is in this episode right where you learn like how good he is at magic they they do go over um it's um kuritsugu is looking at what looks like i guess profiles of a bunch of the people he's fighting against and they kind of go over what their affinities are and what type of magic they can use and i think they say that um What's his name? Kanith is like a necromancer. And yeah, but he's also an expert in like abjuration and transmutation or something like that. Like he's an expert in like three fields of magic. Like yeah. on, honestly, here's the thing. This is why you have heroic spirits. Because if it was just a battle between mages, Kanith would murder everybody because he is so much stronger. Uh, you learn why later. Uh, but I'll just say ninth generation, like you would just immediately turn tail and run. Um, yeah. Because like you would not fuck with a, a mage like Kanith and like a straight well, one to one and, fight and that would was, murder you. And I guess like here I was we can we can push on to Kanith and and Waver's little confrontation. But um, so basically I guess uh, for everyone uh, I, I, and it's the next scene too. 
So um, Karia basically, in order to save Sakura from this uh, fate where she's going to have her, um, her, her life force sucked out by the crest worms in order to make her a good enough mage for the next um, Holy Grail War, right? Like the one that's happening in like six years from now? Yes. Is what um, Zoken's training her for? Or yep. training her, I guess, like... Uh, Essentially, <laughs> what, yes. What he's powering her up for. Um, so I guess, like, if you if it's, if it absorbs life force, if you put a little girl in there for 60 years, it, she'd probably end up being super powerful by the time... Um, oh, I guess it, it's that you would slowly do it to her, where he does it to... Um, to Karia later on in the episode, like like an accelerated program, I guess is what I kind of got from it, and that's why Karia ends up looking like uh, super fucked up by the end of it. Pretty well, much. Look at that! Yeah. Look at that image, man. Who? Yeah, who it's, just a, crawling it's unsettling, around. isn't it? It's uh, almost as gross as if it were snakes, but uh, <laughs> not not quite. I, I really hate snakes. But anyway, I saw so, in the chat and someone uh, L Dubs. Uh, this is something I was going to bring up as well. Um, the language they constantly violate her does does that mean what we think it means harley just tell you sorry I'm, do you want me just to tell you i mean if it's not going to spoil anything no it's not a spoiler yeah it is what it means pretty much yeah oh god yeah <laughs> that is fair even more unsettling ah, <laughs> it's fucked up yeah I mean, well, like I mean, you think gotta that, get like, that grail at a certain point, like how 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 much more violating than like what what's even just happening there can can it get? Like oh, I don't know. That old man looks like he knows a thing or two about violation. Ah, oh, poor 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 little Sakura. All right, so yeah. um, I guess here we're going back to the same snowy mansion from the intro, and I think this is this where they start, or maybe not. I've got a theory that he's going to kill his wife. Well, well I mean, no, I that's know. foreshadowed in the very first scene when he literally looks at her and is like, I'll cause the death of you, essentially. So, yeah, well, I mean, he not. essentially just looks at her right and is like, let's just run away. And she's like, that's not, you know, an option. That's, not, that's not in your nature. That's not an option. Like, we're going to see this through to the end. Because, yeah, he, he essentially foreshadows that, like, directly. Just he looks right at her and is like, I'm, I'm going to be the death of you. Well, I don't mean I mean like, um, an in, like an indirectly indirect. death. I think he's going to write, write up, um, straight up murderer. Yeah, huh? maybe. I don't know. I I was thinking he more meant like I will indirectly be the death, but I, I guess we'll see. Um, so here now we have this is Kaneth for the people who were wondering who we were talking about a minute ago. I'd say if anyone to me seems like he is the villain, it's this guy. I don't know if that's just a little on the nose because of the way they're presenting him. As I like, I mean, the other character that is going to be significant in this scene. Kenneth is his his professor, I suppose. It seems like kind of a university classroom, and that um, the guy in the tie in the middle there is Waver, Waver, Waver Velvet, and yep. he is a third generation mage, if I'm not mistaken. And yes. um, Kenneth actually in this scene does the exposition on behalf of the the new viewers like myself that mages get more strong as the generations move on. So if you're a third generation mage, you're not going to be nearly as strong as a ninth generation mage. Like you said, Kane is ninth generation, right? Yes. In a straight up fight, he'd probably kill Waver in less than five seconds. Yeah. And Waver basically wrote a paper being like a, like, you know, an, an entrepreneurial student in university who obviously has some self interest in like making it seem that he has the potential to be super strong. Basically just wrote a paper saying that family, families and your lineage don't have nearly as much to do with magic strength and magic ability as just honing your craft and working hard. Uh, at least that's what I got from uh, the, the little we got about what, um, what Kane has said about his paper. And basically Kane just embarrasses the kid in class. And he's like, yeah, that's stupid. He's like, just so you know, like you're a third generation <laughs> mage, like you're, you're a baby. You haven't even learned how to talk yet. Like, you're so, a third don't, generation don't, idiot don't, don't, like your family is is a little baby infant who can't even talk yet so don't try to teach this class like is basically what he says which Witch. um you know like i mean getting yeah. called out by your professor like that in class when your paper was about like no i actually if i work hard i could actually become super strong one day 
you know, it, it would hurt. I see why he's upset. And uh, I think that definitely painted Kanith in sort of a villainous light. And maybe this kid in something of a heroic light, but also, I mean, it could end up totally flipping and like this kid could end up being the, like, I don't know, he does have like the, this kind of like beady little eyes and like he, he's got, got dark hair with like kind of a sinister looking part. So, you know, he, he could be evil, but uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think that though, what KJ said about maybe the strength of this show being that the way they present people will make it so that you won't want anyone to die. <laughs> and uh, I mean, that honestly, that's pretty much where I'm at with Attack on Titan at this point too. I, I, I think the only person I'm okay with seeing die is like Flock. <laughs> like, if Flock died, I'd be like, yeah, right. <laughs> that, guy, that guy's kind of a prick. And uh, I, I don't really like him enough to care that he's dead. But like, if it would, like, at this point, if, if Reiner died, if, if even Zeke died, it was like, oh man, like I was starting to like that character. And, or like Aaron, especially if like Mikasa or Armin. But yeah. uh, I guess it, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. But I think that where I'm, my guess right now is that. Kanith or this kid are probably going to be the primary antagonists. I might be way off, but that that's what it seems like. Or maybe maybe Tokiomi. But uh I think I might have been colored by that when you were described him as ultra right wing because I don't know, I think that if you, if you described him as like reasonably conservative, I wouldn't think anything of it, but ultra right wing to me is, is like okay, that's it's getting towards the 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 dangerous end of the political spectrum. <laughs> Well, it's not his politics. It's how he views Magecraft. Oh, okay. He's very I conservative in his goals. In fact, that's actually something I was going to bring up in that scene By with Rinse and Kira. Pragmatic, like he he kind of he, like he's, he's like we'll do what we need to do, kind of, or because I don't know. Eh, I, no, I don't know if I would see that as being quite evil. No, but, uh, mages all supposedly have one goal, which is to reach the root. Now the root okay. is essentially almost kind of like God, not really. It's it's more like all knowledge. It's kind of like creation itself. And Tokiomi wants is very conservative. He wants that wish. He doesn't want power. He doesn't want fame. He doesn't want a shit ton of money. He doesn't want any of that. He just wants to reach the root. So he yeah, Jay just brought that up. Yeah, conservative is more traditionalist. That's actually very, very much within Tokiomi's character. Conservative is in more of a traditionalist in terms of how he views Magecraft. And so he views it as I should get the grail because I'm the only one who's a true mage, really, in this whole fight. Because Zoken oh, okay. Zoken Zoken just wants his own selfish fucking shit. And the Iceburns, they're just they just want their own selfish shit. I want what's good for all mages. I want what is true, what is our birthright as magi, which is the root. And so, so that's he's he's ultra right wing in that regard. Okay, that's fair enough, um, and I guess that we're, we're describing right wing as traditionalist or, or like actually conservative, as opposed to like you know like far right like supremacist type stuff. I think that would uh, no. definitely make me see him less as a villain. But I think what's confusing me about that is does that mean that him giving Sakura to Zoken, if if Sakura were to win the next? Um, the next competition would Zoken get to use the wish would Sakura get it or would would Tokiomi because he's the one that provided the tribute I guess the Sakura champion? would get it the master gets it so okay. Sakura would get it if she wins and so the thing is, is logic that she's my daughter so she'll do what I like I, I'm trying to just rationalize in my head how giving up his daughter was anything resembling a conservative move because that oh, seems like a pretty bold move to me. Like it, it is actually. It's actually very traditionalist, and I can't tell you why. Oh, okay. okay so um, that, that's not supposed to make sense to me yet. That, that I'm, I'm okay yeah. with that. You're supposed yes. to be just as confused. <laughs> Basically, the yeah. <laughs> kind of, yeah. You're, you're supposed to be just as confused as, as Karia is. Because remember, who's being framed in that scene? Whose perspective are we getting? We're getting Karia's. So he's just as confused as the audience is supposed to be in mm -hmm. that scene uh, okay. so kind of we carry with him kind of that confusion and the reason i bring that up is because this scene is also kind of the same way where we talk about framing uh in regards to this scene yeah we're getting who waivers. we're getting waivers perspective and so what i would like you to pay attention to maybe rewatch this scene 
after the after the stream. Maybe just rewatch it. Um, maybe after stream we'll rewatch it together. I don't know. Uh, but really pay attention to what is actually being said um, in terms of who, what is actually going on, because we as the audience are meant to take it a certain way, but what's really going on is a bit more interesting. It's something that Jade brought up earlier is it had me as a nature versus nurture element to the argument with waiver. That's very true. And I'll say that one of them is 100% correct. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them deserved what happened. Um, and so there, yeah, there's, there's some interesting framing going on throughout the show. And so that's what I really like about this first episode is it's trying to get you to pay a lot of attention to the individual character motivations, as well as who's actually being focused on in the scene. Because yeah, certain things are a little confusing, certain things don't quite make sense because of what perspective we're getting. So you should have been confused about that, to be fair, Mark, because you're getting okay. it from Karia's perspective. And so Karia is just as confused as the audience is supposed to be in that moment, because he doesn't understand why Tokiomi would do it either. He's like, why on earth is this happening? What did he, why the hell would he do that? And so we're supposed to be as the audience. We're like, yeah, yeah. Why? Sh why did he do that? And so later on, it's it's revealed, and you're like, oh, okay, all right, I get it. Yeah, there's a lot of that in this show. It happens pretty much every episode. Cool. Well, I definitely do look forward to seeing more, and apparently, I look forward to getting to Fate Stay Night because check that out. Yeah, <laughs> one hundred uh, hentai. It You'll wasn't be... one hundred percent. I'm guessing he means hentai, but more like a visual novel with several very descriptive sex scenes. So okay, uh, we'll this one. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's, let's move on to Stay Night. <laughs> well, okay. So here's I'm the kidding. problem. Here's the here's the problem. We're not going to be moving on to Stay Night, even if this does really well and we want to jump into the sequel. We'll be doing Unlimited Blade Works because the Dean version of Stay Night is trash. It is so bad. It has filler. It has terrible sublines like people die if they are killed. Like it is awful. <laughs> it is, is awful. What so we'll we be just get the 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 not one hundred percent hentai scene compilation. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll just die. I'll just tell you this, Lethal. <laughs> you're gonna be very disappointed because they adapted the second version of the visual novel which toned down a lot of that stuff ah that, that's cape to the fucking magic rape worms just gonna <laughs> quickly check to see if the visual novel is on gog <laughs> <laughs> um fate huh? what happens if i just search fate uh, i'm not seeing any fate stuff here it might be on it's probably gonna be on steam although eh, i'm not looking enough oh Wait, fit, oh, house and fit now. Okay, Bruh. PC gaming's too too deep. Um, but you know, I have a like a GOG actually has got some pretty good selection of like Japanese stuff. Like every single one of the Trails games is on there. That's where I've been playing them. And actually, I think this watching this show and the fact that Trails of Cold Steel Four just came out for PC made me pick up Trails of Cold Steel again. Even though I've been yeah, not avoiding it, just I've been getting thrown off by work I've had to do like for Geeks and Gamers, but I finished playing um, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and um, have my script probably about a third written. I've got about 2,500 words, but I, I, I don't know how long this video is going to be exactly. I don't think it's going to be as long as like the God of War one or the Quake video, but um, basically I'm going to be talking about Breath of the Wild Um running better on a PC while emulating the Wii U version than it does on the system that actually like features Breath of the Wild and um, why that is kind of kind of shitty. And also um, taking a quick look at the Breath of the Wild likes. But um, yeah, I, I, I finished that game, so I kind of started fiddling around with uh, Trails. And the reason, because um, of KJ's favorite character in the Trails series, um, Father Kevin, is a, a knight of the Grals Ritter, which are the, the Grail Knights. And so... The, the show kind of made me think, oh, man, Grail, yeah, i got to play Trails of Gold Steel. You're the only Grail knight for me, Mark. Thank you, thank you. I, I, don't, have, I don't have awesome spiky green hair, though. And uh, yeah, the other thing with um, uh, Father Kevin is he's, he's always winking. Like, like he's doing the, the Agatha, like that meme, where she's like, 
<laughs> in like most of the character photos of Father Kevin, he's doing that. And it, it sometimes makes sense, but I think a lot of it is just they only have so many character photos. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, Father Kevin shows up in UBW as a heroic spirit. Not literally him, get, but like... Oh, I was about but, to but, say, but, it's like, get the hell not, out of here. Not, no, 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 not literally him, but like Archer, like he looks kind of similar and stuff. It's pretty funny. Uh, no, so you're bringing up Kevin. I was like, oh, that's actually kind of funny. I had that thought pop into my head. <laughs> Yeah, I would have lost my shit, especially like if, if this if this actually was crossing over with trails and you just didn't tell me, <laughs> I would have been I would have lost my shit because I've been wanting a trails anime pretty much ever since I finished Trails in the Sky one. Like I was like, oh man, I was like, this is dying to get an anime adaptation, and I'm shocked it doesn't have one, especially because like Persona does Persona three have an anime or is it just four and five? Mm, I think it's just four and five. Okay, yeah, because at least the anime for Persona 4 is actually pretty good. I, I haven't watched 5 because I wanted to finish the game first, and then I, I got so far thrown off from the game that I, I don't know if I'm ever going to go back to it unless it like comes to PC and I restart it, because I, I kind of forget entirely what's going on in the story. But um, the anime for Persona 4, like I played Persona 4, finished it, and then watched the anime right afterwards, and it was a pretty good adaptation. Like Aside from the fact that you're cutting what's basically a hundred hour JRPG down to 24 or it was 24 it might've been 36. Anyways, like two seasons of an anime that covers like that exact same story. And pretty much all the important stuff is in there. Like, obviously you're missing a lot of like dungeon grinding and stuff, but uh, I, I do recommend the anime for persona four, even if you've never played the game, but I uh, can't, can't say anything about five. Cause I actually didn't watch it, but trails trails in the sky would like be a, oh god if, if they if they did the whole trail series as an anime can you imagine how many more people that would get into that series oh god just thinking yeah, about that'd it be makes cool. me happy yeah. yeah um and uh no nathan Childress, i won't restart it on console because with atlas and sega bringing everything to pc now it's only a matter of time before the pc version comes out and i have the i actually bought specifically to encourage them to keep doing that the uh, Persona 5 Strikers game I, I got on Steam just to, just, just so that they'd know. It's like, hey, if you release games on Steam, we'll buy them. So Hey, I Mark, I've wallet. seen something that has pretty much won me over to PC gaming. I just can't oh, yeah? get one at the moment. But it's won me. It's convinced me. 100% convinced me. Did you, just, did you just watch a bunch of video playthroughs of Subverse? or? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I just access to Google Drive for that one, mate. Um, <laughs> nah, nah. Look up fucking Kingdom Hearts free on PC and how good that looks. Oh yeah, yeah I think it, it, that only got me with the uh, Epic Epic Game Store exclusivity. I'm just like, oh god damn it, Square Enix. And the um, the mods, <laughs> the mods that people have made are both hilarious, glorious, and all kinds of fucked up. Yeah, and then um, the, the interesting thing about. Um, PC gaming and mods is soon, maybe not right away, but within the next couple of years, there's a possibility you might start seeing some mods um, of many games on Xbox. Maybe, Ooh. I don't know about Xbox One, but at least the new series consoles, because there's been a lot of talk about what Microsoft is going to do, excuse me, with mods now that they have Bethesda. Because Bethesda, yeah, yeah. Bethesda has this thing called the creation Selling them. They're selling yeah, them. <laughs> Well, and I mean, like, I'm not entirely, it, it is, but I'm also not entirely against the concept of paid mods. It, the, the pricing, though, I think needs to be pretty reasonable. And I think that that's where a lot of the Creation Club and things need to bring in the, the fucking big titty elf girls into Skyrim. But Mark, yeah, what I'm well, going to say is going to give you a fat chub. Kingdom Hearts 3 has a settings, right? Where you can have 30 frames, 60 frames. I think it's 90 frames or unlimited. Yeah, uh, uncapped frame rate is the way to go. In fact, I think that especially if more PlayStation 4 and Xbox One games had uncapped frame rates, that is actually where just playing them on PS5 or Xbox Series X or S even would make them organically just run significantly better. And that's Oh, yeah, no, I, this does. I, I watched this yeah. video where he's comparing the movement of the game and he compares it in 30, 60, and uncapped. Mm -hmm. And just the way the character moves and uncapped, it's like, it was weird. It was almost like he's actually jumping a little bit further than what the other two were. 
And sometimes weird things like that happen too. Um, and they, Dark Souls is probably the easiest example. Um, the reason there needed to be a mod for the PC version of, of the original Dark Souls, not Dark Souls Remastered, called DS Fix, is because one of the weirdest things that was happening was the uh, weapon durability was tied to the frame rate. So you would be able to swing a, a sword just as many times and have it like... It, it, have it basically degrade twice as fast because the game was reading it as two swings for every one swing if it was running at 60 yep. frames a yep. second as opposed to 30. So every so often when you uncap a frame rate, weird things like that happen. I actually just found out that similar issues happen when I actually got my mind was kind of blown by this. The Wii U version of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, not Breath of the Wild, sorry, uh, but Wind Waker, Wind Waker HD runs at 30 frames a second on wii u which to me is ridiculous because it's a gamecube game that they just like upscale so i'm like wait you you couldn't get wind waker to run at 60 frames a second on the wii u like off the bat that's where i'm like okay well i'm playing it on pc uh, there's gonna be a mod and apparently so many things in that game are tied to the frame rate that even aftermarket modders are finding it essentially impossible to actually get wind waker running at 60 frames a second so i'm just like oh god damn it nintendo <laughs> why, do, why you got to break my balls so hard? But um, to be fair, From Software, though, wasn't above that themselves. They've recently gotten a lot better at doing PC ports. But um, yeah, that's why uh, the, the modders always need to get free reigned. And, and game developers, uncap the frames in your games. Or at least give an option for it. Because then, if, even if it's a console game, if it starts running on better hardware, it will run better. Anyways, um, anime. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, we pretty much talked about what there was to talk about in the, um, the school scene, um, or the university, I guess, made school where our boy Waver gets kind of told, um, and so see, we see him checking out books. Uh, this, I guess, is an exposition scene where he talks about the different, um, the different s servants that you can summon, and, um, I think the... The list was pretty interesting. Um, was, so that's the Archer, the Knight, I think. Lancer, I think, was this one. The, the Rider, the Assassin, the Caster, and the Berserker. And uh, the Berserker, I don't know if that's actually a reference to Berserk, but he's got like a big sort of broadsword looking axe thing that's kind of like the Dragon Slayer from Berserk. And um, he's got like the head of what looks like a a hog but it kind of looks a little bit like the berserker armor um like uh, the berserker armor is like a wolf looking demon thing in, in berserk but i don't know i just i thought it was kind of funny that it was a berserker maybe just because i'm a big fan of berserk that's what i was seeing and here we have um waver actually doing the part where he bumps into a delivery man essentially oh wait no no it's just in that same hallway so as he's studying, oh, okay, no, this is after it. So we skip by that part. He finds that relic, and then that's how he ends up summoning his thing. Um, KJ and Lethal, are you guys here? Because I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just muted because yeah. I've got um, construction happening outside. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I just noticed you guys were both muted for a little while, and I was like, did they leave? <laughs> but, but yeah, okay. So uh, I don't know. What did you guys think of the? I don't know. Is it fair to call them character classes, or it's like they're like specific? Yeah, classes? how I refer. Well, that's Those how I are the those are the heroic spirit classes so you have archer who is well duh an archer so specializes in long range combat you have caster who is essentially just a really powerful mage so not mm -hmm. only do you have a mage who's usually the master but you also have like a super uh, uh super strong magician essentially um so then there's uh lancer who specializes in the spear you have saber who specializes in the sword you have assassin who is an assassin and you have berserker who is usually like a tank like a big hulking tank guy um i believe that's everyone i believe that's seven classes unless i missed one but uh you have one master one servant and it all again it all depends on that on that relic so the relic that waver just stole is what allows him to summon his heroic spirit so that is yeah uh, i think um is it um Wait, who was it that got the... Well, yeah, it was Kiritsugu who got the fossilized snake skin. 
And like, I think was that supposed to be like? No, uh, that uh, was that was this is that's this guy right here actually. Uh, Tosaka oh, okay. got the weird fossilized kind of like snake. He said it, it was like I liked how he got that. I thought that was like almost like a Adam and Eve reference. Yeah, and that, that's what I was gonna bring up too. I was I was kind of wondering. It's like oh, okay, so is this supposed to be like the snake? <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't tell you who they summon. That's actually a really important plot point, is you're not supposed to say who they are, and there's a reason why, but we'll get to that. Okay. So it was this Eve. scene here, though, where it's like, I noticed he's already got the assassin. Yes. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I, I didn't realize they had... Because I thought this whole episode was building towards them summoning their servants, and I was like, oh, okay, so wait, this guy already has his. How long has he had it for? And it's not really addressed from what I saw. I thought this machine was pretty cool too. It was like, 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 a, like an old style fax machine or something that was <laughs> using a crystal to like sketch stuff into a parchment. Yeah, it's a, it's like a magic fax machine essentially. Yeah, it uses like a magic crystal to, uh, to like divine like messages and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, so I'll just go ahead and let you know that you have to have the stigmata to summon, but once you have that, the, the, the the symbol on your hand like once you have mm -hmm. those marks you can summon provided you have the artifact provided you have some kind of relic to summon uh and then we get into the summoning process later on in the episode because it's a very specific ritual but the if you don't have a stigmata but you acquire a relic you will develop a stigmata is that like a rule no oh, okay so like waiver did kind of luck out then in a way Maybe. Or maybe not luck, but there, there was uh, like it, it's not one hundred percent that because he got that relic, he would have got a stigmata and been able to su summon a servant. No, just because you have a relic doesn't mean you'll get a stigmata. Okay. So, yeah. All right, and um, Carl Anderson, yes, uh, Fate slash Zero is the one we are watching, and Lethal Lightning and I have not seen any episodes except for the first one. And KJ, who is our other co-host, um, who's, uh, as far as I know, not a YouTuber of any kind, really. Like, you just, uh, you, you exist on the internet, and, and you're a fan of the Animus, um, is an expert on Fate Zero, and the, I guess the whole Fate series. And he's kind of guiding us on this adventure, I, I suppose it's safe to say. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been fun so far. Maybe, maybe this is a question that KJ can answer. What do you think? Are those Fate games on Vito worth owning? Are they available on other platforms? I don't believe they're available on other platforms off the off the top of my head. Well, oh, and by the way, Mark, the uh, by the way, the uh, the Fate Stay Night visual novel for some reason they never actually translated it officially. Ooh. Yeah, so it's kind of like a uh, uh, what's it what, the Crossbell games where they're not officially translated. So you have to download a like a fan patch for them, um, which is a little annoying, but it's not that difficult um and well so, yeah. i'm seeing a game on steam fate ex, ex stella link that, that, that has like a slash as well it's very positive on steam it, it's a pretty yeah. fun little game but it's essentially just dynasty warriors but fate oh okay yeah it's x seed and it's marvelous ink that amazing what's marvelous ink done i feel like i know them oh damon x machina i fucking hated that game i, I heard it was going to be good and then bought it and immediately regretted it um yeah it was it's like a mecha game but it, it's it's not a good one I, I don't recommend it um and yeah i'm not seeing any other fake games here even the the more like this it's it's recommending me final fantasy 14 atelier riza and and honey pop because apparently whoever is doing my steam recommendations is totally based but um yeah, no, I, I guess I, yeah, I don't know too much about the Fate video games, which I mean, I guess is a fair question because I'm sort of the video gaming guy. But I suppose um, if it's a Vita game, any Vita game that you want, buy it now because <laughs> uh, you're, you're not going to be able to later unless you want to track it down on eBay and, uh, you know, do the, the the whole, oh, like, yeah, you're you're logging on to eBay and then paying $200 for a game that realistically should cost you 20 but... Sony doesn't care about preservation, so they're closing all of their legacy storefronts down. I have a, I have a lot of issues with that. It's one of the reasons why I was a bit sad that we uh, had no gaming podcast this week because that that would have been something I, w I would have enjoyed talking about. And um, yeah, but 
anyways, uh, buy buy your PlayStation 3 Vita games and PSP digital games now because they're about to get super expensive unless Sony decides to figure out a way to have people emulate their old consoles on PS4 and 5 or probably just PS5 realistically. But, uh, and yes, if anyone's going to suggest PS now, I, I do not consider that an acceptable answer. Streaming is no, no substitute for natively running a video game. All right. Um, and I guess, yeah, now we're going to, um, is it Karitsugu's kind of little thing where he's talking about, do they specifically state that he's going to get Saber in this scene? No, uh, it, it's not. A lot of things are not, like, going to be explicitly said. Like, you get plenty of, like, exposition scenes, but some things are not, like, explicitly said. You kind of have to tell via, like, visuals. Uh, so one of the things that, like, makes it clear that they're going to get a Saber-class servant is the fact that they have a massive sword hilt. And so it really only makes sense for them to get the, a, a Saber-class. Well, yeah, and don't they say the that it's the sword of Ex- – it's the hilt of Excalibur? Like, uh, like, yeah, they actually reveal that early. So who they get is kind of revealed to the audience right here. Uh, yeah, just, and, yeah, and this is this is a, a, a spoiler that I did kind of know um, in a way that, that King Arthur in this universe is a female. Which, yes, um, is King Arthur is a woman. Arthur yeah. is, is very much a male name. But um, that, I, no. I don't know, is, I've, I made her, hold on, wait. How, I guess there's not really a way I can just show the background here. Maybe if I make us tiny i don't know that's just mostly me but yeah in the background behind where i am right now in our backdrop is um saber or king arthur i guess and um karitsugu so uh, i just i just found that art before we started today and i I don't know she's she's cute i I like the design for king arthur in this i never thought i'd say king arthur's cute but you know it's like her and clive owen wouldn't (laughs) wouldn't she be queen then well here's the thing is her real name is arturia pendragon not Arthur. So sometimes their actual name is lost to time. And so aspects of them are obfuscated. And Artoria is not the only one. So So, I'll just say there's another hero that you see. uh, And actually the, their master directly is like, yo, this is not at all how the, the, the history books like say you like you're like, and so there are aspects where it's like, okay, well, this is wrong. Well, this is wrong. And so the, the history books are not 100%, uh, which is which is pretty interesting. It's um, pretty based how, like, the history books just totally said, nah, it was a dude. I like yeah. that. I respect <laughs> yeah. that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And essentially, it was, like, lost to time. And so, like, Ar- Ar- Arturia became Arthur. And then you have the Arthurian legend, and there you go. Um, and so I'll just tell you, Mark, that that's why they're surprised because they were expecting a man. Oh, okay. That's why they. <laughs> that's even more base. Yeah, that that's why they're surprised. Like, it, it, like I'll go ahead and let you know since we're right right here talking about it because there she is. Love um, her though. <laughs> yeah, like she would, Yeah, so that's why they're shocked. Not that they got saber because they knew they were getting saber, and not only that, they knew they were getting King Arthur, or at least they thought they were getting a man named Arthur, but they got a woman instead. So that's why they're so surprised, and they're like, "What the fuck?" Because that is not at all what they were expecting. <laughs> a waifu? What the fuck is this? It's a good secretly going. Yes. yes yeah yes i got a waifu <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that that's why they're surprised i'll go ahead and let you know because that's literally like the first conversation in the next episode like literally the, the episode opens with it being like so let's uh mm, you're not a guy and so like that's immediately how it starts so that's why they're so surprised well i mean as long as x-ray girl isn't sleeping when we finish this episode i will probably be immediately watching episode two because <laughs> i've been wanting to watch it like all week that's and a good I, feeling i always say that because i i will i i i don't know why i think i need to watch almost all content on the oled tv we have in our bedroom so if she's sleeping i essentially can't watch tv <laughs> Or play Trails of Cold Steel for that matter, because uh, I mean, I guess I could play that on here. It's just I've been capturing my footage in 4K, so I, I want to keep it consistent. Yeah, I think I'm probably like about two years out from making a Trails video, because I I don't think I can make a video on the Trails series until I'm caught up on it, or I'm I'm gonna get things wrong 
that fans of the series will watch and be like, yeah, like, I mean, if you played the next game, you'd know that that doesn't happen. And I'd be like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, so, yeah. I have so, them all, though, or at least up to four, because now four is out on PC. I actually bought it, found out that there was a digital deluxe edition, got my GOG copy returned, and then rebought the deluxe edition just to give them more money, because I bought with my wallet. There you go. So going back to twenty seven thirteen, if you will, Mark, where you where you have selected right there. Yeah. Something that I would like to call attention. Yeah, I did kind of want to go to the uh, the profiles. The yeah, the profiles. Uh, Mage Facebook, if you will. Yeah, where one of the things <laughs> that uh, Karitsugu points out is that like he, he's like wait a minute he's like this person doesn't even know what joy is like this person has never experienced happiness and he immediately is just like i read this person actually scares me and the reason for that is that kire is essentially a wild card not only is he not supposed to be here because he's a fucking priest and he's not a mage so he shouldn't be here yeah but also Kuritsugu already is like identifying like wait a minute this guy might be like a psychopath or like a sociopath at the very least and I can't predict that and if I can't predict that I can't outmaneuver him because yeah. the name of his game is like information gathering and outmaneuvering his opponents and if he can't figure out what Kire actually wants he can't manipulate him and so he's like this person this person scares me and what's interesting is if you want to skip a little bit ahead because I believe it cuts immediately to Kire reading about Kuritsugu and is like this person is interesting this person is just like me and it, like this, <laughs> this, this, this person is it, this person has this emptiness inside I believe that's actually what he says where he's like they have this void and he's like I really want to meet this person essentially he's like what what are you I think he says something along that uh yeah so yeah l dub just pointed out yeah that they br they actually bring that up i think it's Rese that brings that up uh oh. no comment uh -huh. yeah, um, no, I, I was clicking on that one but uh, yeah. he actually <laughs> threw in that five dollar super chat <laughs> yeah. he's actually we'll cover that quick he says i'm here for the star wars what the hell that was uh, a joke about uh, earlier today um i think it was actually was it l dub that was, it might have been that was, that was saying like yeah i thought that this was like a star wars thing and then i clicked on it and i got confused and <laughs> I was like, yeah, my marketing worked. And um, yeah, yeah, so I, I might be crediting that incorrectly. But sorry, keep going with what. No, I was just saying. I was just saying that L Dub is right on the money here. That uh, in fact, that's even what Kuritsugu brings up. I think it is in this scene. It's either Rise that says it or it's Kuritsugu in this scene. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think that that is this scene where he's like, this person masters disciplines and then he just quits. And he's like, this person doesn't have passion. This person doesn't know what fucking passion is. Like, this person is an actual legitimate threat. Like, because I, I legitimately cannot predict this person. This person is a total anomaly. And so at the end of this episode is kind of, or the middle of this episode is kind of setting up that, like, there's going to be a rivalry between Kuritsugu and, and Kure. Yeah. yeah. As they well, both yeah, try to. I guess, I guess I can see it. He has um, yeah. very severe eyebrows now that I'm paying attention to it, which I found out recently is something Lethal Lightning's totally into. Yeah, 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 it was Kuritsugu. Okay, that's right. Uh, the one thing that's throwing me off... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I should qualify that because I was talking about um, Satsuke from Kill la Kill who has extremely severe eyebrows. Mm, oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah. The, the one thing that's throwing me off, L-Dubs, is we don't have the subs for some reason. Like, I don't have the subtitles, so I can't, oh, like, I guess I could call back to those. Um, so instead I'm just going on visual. So I'm trying to remember. And the thing is I've been speed running through unlimited blade works. So I'm trying to get a schedule together while I'm going back and watching this again. So I'm watching a lot of fate stuff. So I'm going back and forth. So you'll have to forgive me when I, when I, when I goof. Okay. So yeah. So he says the fourth, no fifth is Kire Kot um, Kotamine sent by the church. By the church. <laughs> He's the son of the overseer, Father Rise Kotomine. Studied under. Okay, yeah, come on. <laughs> I watch this. Is what's going to get me claimed by Ufotable? Yeah. Falls, but okay. Maybe someone. Member of the church's eighth assembly. Yeah. So he's he's, he's essentially. He's essentially an assassin for the church. Yeah, and yeah. that's that's what um, Karitsugu was referred to as by Tok to Tokomine and, and Kirei. That yeah, like a, a is, yeah, and, yeah, so Karitsugu is a mage killer, and then Kirei is also kind of a mage killer because he's an assassin for the church. And so... He, <laughs> 
<laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Jade, I do have a comment blocking the subtitles. You're right. Uh, no, Mark does. Yeah, no, that's me. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Why so many? He almost got lost at the point of mastery. Yeah, and then switches to another and Neville looks back. Yeah. He's learned like yesterday's trash and he's like Okay, this person's a serious threat and incredibly yeah. dangerous. Yeah, because I he basically got up to the point of being like, considered a master yeah. and then yeah. learned something new. He has no concept of self-interest. There it is. And he's like, I, I have no idea of like what's going on here. And then we cut to Kira, who's reading about like, oh, he's just a freelancer. He's in it for the – or there's no way he's a freelancer in it for the money. And then we cut back where he's like, this man has never experienced. So there's the, it's almost like they're kind of like trying to read into each other. And I love how it's jumping back and forth. Yeah, um, it was re really well done. Yeah, where he's like, he's no wish of any kind to be granted. And so he's like, well, that's not good. Yeah, see, what is he after? So they're essentially almost saying the same thing about each other. Like, why are they risking their lives for the Grail? What are they really after? Because if the Grail, exactly, the Grail chose Kotamine in the same way that the Grail chose Karitsugu. So they the have to have master. a reason to want the Grail. The thing is, the Grail doesn't choose a master that has no need for it. The Grail always chooses a master that wants the Grail for some reason, that has a reason to claim the Grail. And so that's what Karitsugu is like, wait a minute, this person doesn't have any passion. This person's essentially a sociopath. What? He has to have a reason to want the Grail because the Grail summoned him as a master, but what on earth is that reason? What on earth could it be? Because he doesn't have any passion for anything. So what could he even want? And so uh, Kutamine is kind of seeing the same thing where he's like, you know, he's accepted dangerous jobs. He's not really in it. He can't be in it for the money. Like, what is this person after? Is he like me? Like, what what's going on here? So they're both trying to figure out what each other are after. So it really is setting up a rivalry between these two characters and i really like the way it's done something that jade brought up uh in one of the earlier comments about how it kind of jumps back and forth yeah right there i like the them kind of going back and forth they're kind of reading about each other uh and we actually see that actually later in the series there's another scene where you kind of hear like two characters reading and it kind of overlaps and stuff it's pretty cool um but yeah, this is a this is one of the many good scenes in this first episode that sets up a lot that will be explored in later episodes so but that's it yeah good stuff but yeah i just wanted to go back in time and, and talk about that real quick I, I i totally just marked myself again i'm muted um i think because x-ray girl is playing um crypt of the necrodancer so i was like oh well if i'm not talking people might hear her mechanical keyboard clicking so but i was going to say though that maybe we'll uh, because we kind of blew past it i'll spend a little more time on jock nerdy's super chat here jock nerdy for five dollars says i'm here for the star wars what the hell i looked it up and it was subhuman 84 who said false advertising, Mark, when I, I, I um, named the podcast Duel of the Fate Zero, which, yes, is a conscious reference to the Phantom Menace um, score soundtrack song, Duel of the Fates, which I think was also actually supposed to be the title for Episode Nine before they went with the much less inspired, uh, or I guess equally uninspired because it was the name of a song, uh, Rise of Skywalker. But, uh, the, and happy the birthday, of... subhuman. Oh, yes, yes, and happy birthday, Subhuman84. I don't know if he's watching right now, but he did uh, comment on my Twitter post for it. So uh, in the event that you're silently watching from uh, behind the wheel of your truck, um, happy, happy birthday, man, and drive safe, because uh, Subhuman is a, a long-haul driver. Um, but yeah, so um, I guess that's pretty much it about the uh, kind of juxtaposition scene of... Um, uh, of Kire and Karitsugu kind of sizing each other up, I guess would be the way to put it. Sizing each other up? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, yeah. I'd say that mm -hmm. works. Yeah, they're trying to size each other up, trying to figure out what the other wants. Because the, the name of the game here, at least for Karitsugu, is he's trying to you know, information gather so he can try to figure out how to manipulate these other masters. Because really, if you can kill the master, the servant is donezo. So if you can assassinate the master, you're good as gold. So he's trying to figure out kind of how can i do this how can i accomplish this and kira is the one that's like the odd man out he's the one that sticks out like a sore thumb which is why he's like this person terrifies me because i i i don't think i'll be able to predict this person essentially uh, yeah and he, he's got he's got the assassin as well so that uh <laughs> i think especially if you're worried about him being sneaky that uh he's got the sneakiest of all <laughs> of all the the servants so, indeed man all right, so I guess uh, what more do we really have to cover here? I'm trying to think, like, 
there wasn't a whole lot of other kind of big scenes. I guess there was this one scene with Waver and his family where they're like, hey, what's that shit on your hand? And, um, but I, I don't know that I really got too much out of this unless it's just kind hey, of trying to say, I like this he's thing. Like, he's just like a normal kid. No, um, he's a douchebag. Yeah, no, he's an asshole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was yeah. being a prick to them. But, like, what I mean is that he has a home life. Like, it's not that they're no. all no, they're, not, they're, not, they're not his grandparents. No, it's he's all, not related to bullshit. them. Oh, it's yeah. All yeah. Spell. It's yeah. All spell. yeah. Yeah. He pulls it in the coffee. He's like, I'm getting sick of fucking brainwashing these people. Yeah. Huh. Watch, watch, watch this scene. Watch it. Watch it. Watch the coffee. You two like coffee, right? Watch their eyes. <laughs> Look at that. Do I have Sorry, to start the hypnosis all, all over again and have to come up with some bullshit about why I stole the fucking chicken? Because I'm going to cut its throat later and do a and do a spell. Oh shit! Yeah. So they were like, "Oh, what happened to your hand?" And he's like, oh, "I wish you guys hadn't noticed that." And he's like, "Fuck!" And he's like, "Pay attention to the coffee." And so he's leeching so is it, off. Is it just like he wanted to like feel like he had parents? <laughs> no, he it, he's using them as camouflage. Oh, I'm here uh, with my grandparents. Um, you know, I'm just some um, waver velvet here with my grandparents. I'm not in the death battle. What are you talking about? No, oh, neat, hmm. cool. So yeah, I guess uh, here though is the hilt of uh, hilt of Excalibur, and uh, you should probably pause it. Yeah, glad. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot. Uh, you know, I'm probably gonna get claimed anyways. As like, like I don't mind getting claimed because I mean the ad revenue. I was making... thinking more like um getting the stream taken down if you play too long. Yeah, and that that's kind of the bigger issue. And uh, like the first episode of Attack on Titan, the Attack on Titan show that we do with uh, Geeky Pixie, um, that we did. Her her episodes both got claims, but one of them actually got claimed so hard that it they locked it and made it so that people can't even watch the episode and i'm like oh man so i had to like re-render it with like just a big picture of sasha eating a potato in front of the footage mm. and uh, that, that one seemed to be okay so all the episodes are up there but hopefully that won't happen to this one that was the only one that that got claimed that hard though but uh production ig uh, you, you suck <laughs> I, i'm pro i'm promoting your show here <laughs> um all right, yeah, so I guess, um, am I missing anything else, like, super significant that happens in these, or are we just getting into the summoning rituals? We're getting into the summoning rituals of all the servants, and and this is actually something that Kritsugu brings up, where, again, they're talking about how he's going to summon Saber, and he's like, well, actually, Caster or Assassin would have been a much better fit for me, Yeah, especially Assassin, and he's like, well, I get what I get, but... He's like, I, 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 want, I would like to be sneaky, sir, better be yeah. sneaky something that will be revealed later but oh yeah I'm, I'm right with you l-dub the summoning scene is really well done very well animated oh, yeah, Honest, yeah. honestly though there's a there's an animation cut in unlimited blade works because there are two double length episodes by the way so there's episode zero and episode one and combined that's like two hours and there's a summoning scene in episode zero that is so well animated it's crazy so this is really well done but they up the ante in unlimited blade works like that th there's a summoning scene in that that's just like wow how much money did you get you could have probably paid for another anime for the, the budget that you probably spent with this one animation cut so what what was the release order of these shows so Ufotable did fate zero then unlimited blade works and then the heaven's feel movie trilogy so so fate zero was made first yes because okay, so why do people keep on saying like oh you should watch one of the other ones first because this one's like a prequel and then you would defend it saying like yeah that this is a story though that functions this, pretty well if you watch the prequel first this is the one you have to watch first because you should start with fate stay night and then watch unlimited blade works and then watch heaven's feel and then watch fate zero the problem is that Fate Stay Night is dog shit. Studio Dean did a very bad job adapting it, and Unlimited Blade Works doesn't really work as an entry point. No matter how much r slash fate would lead you to believe, they're all nerds and they're all fucking wrong. Fate Zero makes the most sense to start, and then you go into UBW, and then Fate Zero, and, the, or, and then um, uh, Heaven's Feel, because fate stay night for an anime only is unwatchable it's total garbage i mean the yeah. the the scripting is bad the animation is dated it's just so much worse and so the quality between um oh yeah uh, oh yeah no the yeah 
that, that's a really good Karia. Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah, we should uh, definitely show Karia. Karia's we'll, answer, yeah, we'll, so we'll, we'll definitely get to that. Um, yeah, um, th there we go. We'll, we'll get to it, don't worry. But that's kind of why I always recommend people start with Fate Zero, is because it's the logical start point, because it is the beginning of the story. But because Stay Night does not have a good adaptation, it's really the only place to start. If Ufotable does a remake of the Stay Night route, then that will be the logical starting point. But the thing is, they're busy with Demon Slayer. Yeah. So it will probably be a long time before they get back to Stay Night. And they are big fans of the Fate franchise. That's kind of was their bread and butter. Uh, they got their start, actually, back in kind of mid-2000s, late, kind of like 2008-ish era, doing the Karno Kyokai or the Garden of Sinners movies, which kind of takes place in the same universe. It has nothing to do with the Grail War, though. It's more, it's it's mage stuff, though. It's, it's a lot of fun. But oh, um, that's a totally separate thing. And so they got their start doing that, and then they kept doing Type Moon stuff within Fate Zero and then UBW and stuff. So that's kind that, of why you start with Fate Zero. I guess that's actually kind of like Trails as well, where it's like you have the Legend of Heroes series where – there's the trail series that are all like kind of like like MCU style shared universe consistent arcs all telling one story. But then there's also like the old was it like Dragon Slayer I think was the name of the the other Legends of Heroes games that yeah technically take place in the same world as Trails, but it's like essentially it has nothing at all to do with the story of the Trails games. But uh, yeah, no, hey, interesting some of these expanded universes though that you see in Japanese fiction. Because it, it seems like such an, a novel new concept in American fiction. I guess like you now comic universes like in the comic books sort of always had shared universes for, for DC and Marvel. But it just seemed like in the last, I guess, 10 years, 15 years, it's become such a trend to be like, I guess because of Marvel, everyone's like, oh man, we got to do like a shared universe. And it's like, eh, I don't know. You, you can do it if you're going to do it well, but if, if not, maybe don't. <laughs> um all right so i guess what else uh yeah not really much else happens here except for um karitsugu kind of saying that the saber probably wouldn't be his his ideal yeah um, and did you did you notice iris line though your dream i'm sure he'll understand yeah so that's again that's why they're so damn surprised because it's like what the fuck <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess like yeah, if you're thinking of King Arthur as being a man and you know that you have the hilt of Excalibur as your relic, probably be a pretty safe bet that it would be Arthur that you'd be getting. If not, like, I guess Lancelot never used Excalibur. He, he used Arthur's wife. But Oh, wait. So, I mean, does that mean in this um, universe like, there was like a lesbian tr tryst between Guinevere and uh, female I fucking Arthur? hope so. Yeah. Well, where's Maybe. that? Maybe. <laughs> nice <laughs> although wait no like she would be married to her it would, the tryst would be with lancelot maybe i don't know we, we got to get to that point. well either way someone's ass is getting pounded <laughs> why, why are we why are we even here if, if we're not going to see lesbian king arthur having yeah, what the with fuck? <laughs> like um oh yeah so there's the snake skin that i was referring to earlier and yeah you're right it's um Te, 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 Tekomi? God, I'm still forgetting these names already. Yeah. yeah Tokiomi. There we go. That's the, the name I was looking for. The the, the snake of the skin of Satan. <laughs> if um if Lethal and I are right in our theory that it's the um it's the Adam and Eve snake. Okay, so yeah, here we go. This is kind of what oh, yeah. we wanted to reference earlier. So this is what happens to Karia after he's basically spent a year being violated by the rape worms and um yeah he he looks old and, and really fucked up his, his face half of his face seems like it's been destroyed and i think um part of that i guess was just how hard he was going with it because like it, sakura had been there for what was it was it a couple months that and she seems totally fine but i guess like they weren't um sending them after her nearly as hard as they did with yeah. Karia because Karia is not going to spend six years getting his magic power enhanced. It's like he's got one year to get in good enough shape, I guess, uh, good enough magic, magic skill form in order to win the, the Holy Grail war. Yeah. He needs to have enough mana to manifest the spirit. 
Yeah. So if you don't have enough mana to manifest the heroic spirit, you're donezo before the game even starts. So that's kind of why, is he needs kind of enhancement with the crest worms. Um, uh, poor Karia. Yeah. Wrecked. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think that, like, at least after one episode, I'm pretty sure, uh, I, I think I will say that at this point, I'm not saying it's not subject to change, but at this point, I think Karya is my favorite character. But just because of how how willing he was to put himself through, like, this ordeal. He's just the one I have the most, girl. he's the one I have the most interest in at the moment. Yeah. I just feel like his story that's going on is the most interesting. Yeah. And I think a lot of that actually has to do with his dad as well. I want to know more about his dad. Yeah. Look at him, fucking Dracula looking motherfucker. Might, who might be a vampire. <laughs> we know that he was referred to as a vampire in a way that sounded like a pejorative. Like you're just a vampire. Yeah, like, like an insult. Like, like like you're you're just a, an old an old cranky witch lady. Like it's like yeah, it might not actually be a witch, but uh I think it, it might have been literal. And yeah, mm -hmm. I think uh, I I was actually pretty certain that when he said he was going to be um basically like like pumping up his power essentially artificially over the course of, of a year which isn't nearly enough time and i was almost 100 percent certain at that point too i'm like oh he's gonna get the berserker for sure and I, I was i was correct so i know that because it's revealed in this episode i can't really claim that with 100 percent certainty that you guys will believe me but i really was thinking he's gonna get the berserker because he's the one that kind of just needs to be going all in and <laughs> probably won't have very much skill so because, i'll uh, go ahead and kind of quiz you see if you know who the other servants are uh just oh, kind of based on like you want me to just well, fire them you, all off from you know who assassin is obviously because that's yeah. Kira, and then you have berserker which is which is karia who does tosaka have in your opinion um wow. well, you mean um, to, to, tokiomi yeah, Tokiomi Tosaka. Um, I don't know. Would he have the caster if he's the one Maybe. that's like the the Maybe. ultra like like traditionalist mage guy? Him having the mage servant would make some sense. That will be revealed uh, in episode two. Okay, we need um, to get the okay, give me give me give me the next Maybe. one. Maybe. Uh, maybe uh oh god do a super cut of every time in these streams when i go maybe it's like five hours long if we have one one intrepid viewer that, that could do that uh, then uh maybe we'll be able to figure that out i, yeah. I would put like, we'll do it. on it but x-ray girl now like her life outside of work is essentially watching nerd rotic streams and like taking notes so i, I don't want to make her do that for our show also. <laughs> um well you know that kritsugu has saber so yes yeah okay that one i wasn't even gonna guess and we know who, that um, who did waiver get uh, okay so here let's see the other options are archer lancer rider rider and knight. caster is no. that one of them no, no there's knight saber knight is, knight saber, is right? the saber class yeah okay, yeah so so rider um Ar archer rider lancer and caster those are the four caster, but I, I already i already guessed caster for um tokiomi yeah so um i, I it's really just between those three lancer archer and rider mm -hmm. see uh, the thing i don't necessarily know what the difference between lancer and rider should be because to me a lance is used on a horse so um i don't know like the, i don't think the kid would be an archer maybe archer yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I guess I'm gonna go with Archer. Okay. I don't right. know what I'm basing that on though. Who else? Like, who are the other? Kanith and. Yeah. And I mean, else? well, the fact that, like, well, is there, are we missing? I mean, something? Kanith is bound to show up because he was going. He was getting a relic. And there's no way he wouldn't have just like randomly grabbed the relic unless he already had command seals. So he's oh, okay, probably yes. going to show up. Because like if you think about it, well, he was getting that relic that Waver stole. So he's oh, going to yeah, need to right. get another yeah, one. I guess, I guess if Waver stole his relic, then it wouldn't necessarily be him. Um, well, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll say Lancer for him. Okay. And, yeah, but, but wait, there's there's got there's still the rider, and there's one more. There should be one more master. 
but are we that will be revealed that will be revealed in episode two i have i (laughs) just making sure i was like am i just totally forgetting about something no no you're (laughs) you're not you're not forgetting they have intentionally not shown one master in this episode okay uh lethal what what are your picks do you you oh gosh i don't know man i'm (laughs) Well, I don't really know either. I was mostly just trying to guess. Yeah, no, it's just it's just guessing. It's just for fun. I mean, we're not being like ultra serious. I just was wanting to know just for fun. Um. All right. Okay. Um. All right. Get back to me next week, and I'll tell you what what it was, and I'll say that. <laughs> you can be wrong. It's okay. <laughs> No, I, well, I got no, no idea. Chattel, we know that uh, Mara, we know that Berserker went to Karia. Yeah, Berserker yeah. So, went to Karia. Assassin is Kotamine. Saber is Kiritsugu. And I'm still, I man, I can't remember everyone's name either. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, know. yeah. No, he is. He yeah. is. We'll it's get to him. St. Clair says Ryder is so awesome in this series. Easily one of the best characters, but yeah, we'll get to him. But um, yeah, we want to go through the summoning se- uh, summoning kind of sequence here. Very well animated, very well uh, kind of written. Kind of s- summoning ritual doesn't require you know elaborate evocation, but it's just kind of like a chanting, you know, of like the you know I will I commit myself to uh, destroying all evil in the world. I will be all good in the world. Um, you know, come forth from the seventh circle of binding or whatever you know heed my words and then uh we're ready to go everybody's getting some it god so well animated too like i don't even want to know how much time it spent to like animate all that light i bet that was annoying getting that just right with the shading and everything Oof, yeah. Oh yeah here it is i hereby swear i should be all good in the world no nope. feed all evil in the world Lee will be like, no boobs, no attention. <laughs> That's not true. Some of them have booty. <laughs> well, I mean, there there will be boobs, as we kind of said. Like King Arthur is a waifu in yep. this, so yeah, you know, win win. That's a good question. <laughs> so does that mean if like you could be like, so you got to do whatever I say, right? Well, we'll get into that. <laughs> maybe <laughs> he's like so uh, my 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 wife i i iris I, is it iris or you were calling her irie is it, yeah is he, he calls her he calls her irie her full name oh, okay. is iris veal von eisenberg or I, oh, Einsburn. Okay. but yeah, like, Mine just calls his wife irie he's like look so. look arthur arthur can i call you arthur here's the deal i've got a <laughs> live-in waifu wife you're a waifu let's have a threesome I go. have no interest in the Holy Grail. Well, anymore. I'm your master. <laughs> like, yeah. Guess what? <laughs> what if I, your your wish with the Holy with the with, with the your 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 wish with the Grail <laughs> was to be like I just wanted a real life wife of me, but then like you get one anyway. So like, oh, I got no reason to risk my life over this. And your wife's just like uh, <laughs> standing right beside you, like what the hell? Uh, you heard me. Well, as um as Fringy and Mara always say, no, no, no. <laughs> so if you go back a couple, like a second to like what Waver is looking at, you're looking at his servant. Uh, if you want to take another guess, you know, I'll let you. Oh, just for, okay. just for funsies. We're let's having fun we can, here. Let's see if we can dial this back with the crappy Apple TV remote because I can't. Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, there we go. There's Waver's server. Okay, so I'm definitely wrong about Archer. Yes, um, yes, you are. That, yeah, well, I, I guess I was thinking because he's like a little guy. That no, it's fine. Hey, look, what attacker. Is, yeah, I mean, we're just having fun. I'm just, I'm just, yeah, we're just, um, we're just having fun. He did himself a mischief. Yeah. I don't know that I'd be able to lean Lancer or Ryder with what I saw there. Yeah, I know I'm wrong about the archer though, because at least the picture of the archer was was female. Mm. Um, although I guess I mean, I to, oh, oh yeah, here fair, it though, is. The, the pic, the photo of the knight was not necessarily female or male. Yeah, because yep. it was it was in full armor. And here's the here's where like oh we've won the battle like this is this is this is end this is end game victory is ours like oh yeah. And so that's the servant of. Tosaka. Tosaka, okay. Yep. Yeah, see who I asked. Oh, so yeah. was that the Lancer then? Maybe. Yeah, okay. So that kind of looked like 
like at like another night and i knew that it although i guess it really, again could be the rider like rider and lancer could be yeah. interchangeable at least as far as i'm concerned because when that when do you ever use a lance not on a horse that's my question <laughs> can anyone well, please tell me that a well, lance is not a practical weapon <laughs> well here's the thing is that like it could also just be a spearman like with what l dub was saying that I, Lancer yeah, that that like sense. spartans fight because like yeah, Lancer okay, yeah, shield usually and stuff so they're kind of like you, you know what you know what kills me about that i think with l dub um I guess he's got Mandalorians. I, I don't know if for some reason I was processing that as Spartans, like Halo Spartans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no. Hey, I guess that's fair. Don't have shields yeah. usually. Yeah. I don't know that I'd want to fight with a shield, a spear without a shield. Although, wait, I guess I did that in Dark Souls all the time. I used yeah. to use a spear before I decided that bro that uh, lo great swords are the way to go in Dark Souls 1, I found. Mm -hmm. Mostly because if you get the cursed sword of Artorius... You can basically just walk right through the new Londo ruins because you don't have to constantly be buffing yourself to, to kill the spirits. You can just cut right through them all. Also, it's a really good sword. Um, yeah, so I, I guess that's that. And we're ending on Waifu Arthur here. <laughs> as I said, is also our, yep. our backdrop that I can't I can't ever solo the background. I can solo no. me. Hi. Yeah. Looks strange. I hit you got to remove hair. everything. Yeah. Oh, wait, or did I do? No, I didn't do it just there. That's just the the problem is. <laughs> yeah, I've got to remove us all from the stream. It's the only way to do it. So hold on here. We'll. That was it. <laughs> um, okay, adding everyone back to stream. There we go. And my hair looks silly coming out of my hat. Yeah. Creed Segu holding his, uh, his uh, trusty contender, uh, which is a very interesting gun. A contender is a very very weird gun pretty cool though mm. yeah it's a it was well, a handgun but it, it almost loads like a musket like it, it only holds one shot so you have to like break the chamber open like the actual uh, actually that's a good point like what point in history is this supposed to take place yeah i was trying to figure that out like, i was trying to figure like so, there cars and shit going around. yeah this is the year 1990. oh okay yeah yeah, because I, I was thinking it was like more like turn of the century or something like that. But, uh, and no, by that, no. I don't mean 1999. I meant like like early 1900s, like World War One or something. But maybe it's just because it came right off Attack on Titan. But there, yeah. I guess there was not really anything except for the radio. No, I guess, no, that no, was listening to. no, I'm wrong. It's 1994. I knew oh, that was wrong. The second I said 1990, <laughs> I was like, I'm wrong. Pretty, pretty much the same era there, though. I yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think you were that far off. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, I guess that's that for episode one of Fate Zero, and I suppose of our show, unless anyone's got any other thoughts that they want to throw out there, or um, I guess I really liked they... it overall. I really liked the first episode. Um, looking forward to episode. Two. My question um, is: every episode forty minutes long? No, no. no. Okay, the so one. the first episode is forty minutes long, and then the episodes after that are regular twenty okay. minute episode so next week we'll be talking about episode two which is a shorter episode and then we'll be tackling the first kind of battle arc if you will which is episodes three through five and so we'll be the kind of reason... tackling those in quicker succession just because that's a lot of fighting and we can go through that a bit quicker the reason yeah, i ask um... is i just like to plan like you know when i'm gonna watch it and shit yeah and how i'm gonna yeah. smash it all that but no i i really really like this first episode i'm intrigued i want to know more and yeah, I'm this is just going to quickly copy. Very, our, uh... very good first episode. Yeah, no, it's uh, one of my favorite anime for sure. So I'm glad we're going through it. And uh, I look forward to, uh, you know, kind of us going through it in sequence and just kind of tackling it bit by bit. But um, yeah, I'm we'll someone be... that um, I pick favorites. So at, at this moment, I don't really have one. So I'm looking forward to becoming like a, a, a shill for a certain side. Mm -hmm. And like a full on <laughs> and a full on hater for another side. I look um, forward to you and Mark doing that, and then it biting you both in the ass, so I can just laugh a lot. <laughs> Hence my um my fuck Gabby, like I'm a very firm <laughs> fuck Gabby kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, and I hate that you accidentally like or indirectly put me on Team Gabby. You made your I, choice. I felt the need to defend her because I think she's a good character. But anyways, it's not very well formatted. But for anyone that did not see like my Twitter posts and everything about this show, 
Um, actually, uh, in the episode description here, if you guys watch the, the VOD, I'll put our watch list. So if you want to keep up with us, if you haven't watched the show, or even in, like, I guess as a, as a what is it called? A shill, like a self-shill. If you want to... Um, Oh, hold on. I uh, didn't know it'd be done before seven. If you need, oh man, I just I just got your message now, Mara. Sorry, Mara wanted to join the stream. I guess if you want to come, give your thoughts and say hi if you're still there. I just uh, sent you the link. Yeah. Um, sorry, I didn't know Mara. I didn't know Mara was available. I, I guess I was not uh, not paying attention to those things. But anyways, um, if you guys want to um, tell friends that you think might like the show that you think might enjoy our show as well. Hey, um, you don't need to commit to like marathoning this whole thing to talk to me about it. Just um, watch based on this episode guide. So this week was obviously the, the, the series premiere. Next week, we're only watching episode two. So if you want people to get caught up for our next episode, they really just need to watch the first and second episode of the show, and they'll be right where at least Lethal and I are. You're not going to catch up to KJ, though, because that's like you got to watch the anime six times to catch up to KJ. <laughs> He's on, <laughs> on viewing number seven here. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. This is viewing number eight because I, I steamrolled through the show last week to put that list together. So that was my seventh time watching it. I didn't. Oh I didn't. I didn't. You watched the whole series last week? Yeah, yeah, I I, uh, I, I, I uh, went through it in two days and made that list for you. So the one that you just posted in the chat, yeah, that was yeah, that was the fruits of forty eight hours of like, uh, I gotta get through this. That's, that's incredible. That I, uh, is actually pretty impressive. Yeah, like when, when I said, hey, make that. make us an episode list. I, I didn't know I'd be like, giving you like honest to god homework, but uh, apparently I did. Oh, well, I mean, I'm doing a lot more because one of the things that Lethal, I told Mark before the show is I'm getting a list together of what songs are played and when so that I can actually talk about the music and actually post links to the tracks in the comments uh, so that people can listen to the music like after the episode or they can open it up at a different tab or mute us for a minute just to kind of listen to it a bit. Um, So Mark didn't even ask me to do that. I'm just doing that because talking about this series without – mentioning the music the fact that i didn't mention it at all this episode uh, it gave me a bit of a headache because it's like we just talked about star wars and we didn't even mention john williams and i'm like oh really so i'll be mentioning the music a lot more in the next episode if i have that list ready which will be a That's, big undertaking but it's like know. jeremy talking about star wars and not mentioning kathleen kennedy just it just much. can't be uh, it just can't <laughs> be done <laughs> pretty much all right, I just added, uh, I don't know if it updated yet, but in the description for this episode, there is our full watch list that's kind of uh, poorly formatted and in the chat now. So those are the episodes that we will be covering each week. If you guys want to re-watch the show or watch it for the first time, uh, th- that's what we'll be covering on each episode. Mara, you have the floor. Yeah. What, did you, what did you think of this episode? <laughs> well, like I said in earlier in the chat, it took ev- just about every ounce of mental strength I had not to just let netflix run into the second episode because it it ends with the, the summoning and i'm like okay i have to see which which ones do they get i want to see which ones they get <laughs> and i mean yeah i guess had i um continued to watch watch into that episode i would have spoiled the little game we had at the end i did yeah. notice that the that episode started with waiver mm-hmm. but i i was basically just scrambling to find my remote I didn't hear anything they were saying. I was just um, basically trying to find find the Apple TV remote, not this one, the one that's in our bedroom, without um, mm-hmm. disturbing JoJo. And I kept on having to pick up the little blanket she was sitting on and move her around. So <laughs> like, she was freaked out. She's like, Daddy, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, but, poor uh, JoJo. <laughs> uh, ev- eventually, I just, I just opened up the Apple TV app on my phone and just paused it and then turned off the, the TV. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I did find the remote. It just took some time. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, quick thoughts. Um, like first off, good recommendation, KJ. Like I said, I really want to watch the second episode and get into the first battle arc. Um, uh, the one, the the character that really intrigued me was Karia because I'm looking yeah. at his motivations. He has like a very, um, like almost Tragic. like selfless motivation because he wants like he's doing he's sacrificing his own well being for Sakura. He's like my my father is a evil piece of shit and i can't let him do this to you so i'm going to take your place and i'm going to risk my well-being and my just about my life essentially just so like you can actually have a life Life back your your mom and your sister 
because he doesn't want her with his father. He's like he's saying, like he like tells her, like when he hugs her, he's like, you know, like you know, eventually, like you're gonna go back to your mom and your sister. We're gonna all gonna leave here, sort of situation, so we can all be happy, basically. And yeah, and I thought I thought it on that point. Uh, that, I thought it was really sad that she's like, I don't even know who those people are anymore. It was like, oh. well, yeah, because like like he's like his his father is like you know like like kind of like how um the other sister is like you know I don't like. She, when he's asked about Sakura, it's like, oh, she's gone. Like, I don't have a sister anymore. Sort of like they each, each in their own way, have to pretend like the other doesn't exist. And it's that's like very sad because like they're little girls and they're kind of wanting to do this in a sense to please the the adults. And it's like it's like you know like if I do this and uh, like this like my father's gonna be happy if I do this then my adopted. My adoptive father is going to be happy, so it's like, and Sakura has to like pretend that you know she never had a family p- prior to joining the um, Karyas uh, mm-hmm. family. So, and the other scene that I liked um, was the back and forth between. I mean, when I say back and forth, I mean like the the cuts back and forth between um, Kotamine, no, yeah, Kotamine, and. Sorry, how do you pronounce his name? Kar- Karyagu? Karyagu? Uh, I mean, Kiritsugu. Karyagu? Yeah, yeah Kiritsugu. Kiritsugu, Kiritsugu, Emiya, and Kotamine Kire. Yes. And the, part of the reason why I loved that back and forth is, well, two reasons. One is because they're trying to read the other, like you pointed out earlier in the stream. And it's like, well, th- this guy has no motivations for money. So why the hell did he put his life at risk doing these mercenary missions? And then the other, and then. Yeah, on the other hand, it's well, this guy really has no passion for anything. He gets to a point and he like he leaves it and moves on to the next one. So like, where is his motivation? Like, why is he? What? Why was he picked? And, like, why did the grill pick him as a master or like for the uh, battle? And the other reason why I liked it is because if you're willing to watch a movie with subtitles, there's a movie called M, and it reminds me of a scene where they're trying to find this uh, child killer and you have this back and forth with the cops going through their actions and wanting to catch the killer and they have the on the other hand these criminals themselves wanting to catch the killer because the killer is putting the heat on them in a sense because the cops are like cracking down on like certain at like parts of the city so like we got to catch this guy because he's making it more difficult for us to commit crime and the cops are trying to catch the criminal because well he's a criminal sort of situation and i love that back and forth i feel like i might have seen that movie is that movie like older yeah Yeah. it's older like there Mm -hmm. are two versions and the the subtitled one that i'm that i'm referring to is the one with peter glory yes classic film by fritz lang who's a very well known german director okay I, i just looked it up i totally watched this in film school Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> very good movie. And I'm glad you brought it up. I'm actually surprised. I was not actually thinking about M, but that's a pretty good comparison, actually. Uh, yeah, that's a wonderful movie. Highly recommend if you le- mm-hmm. haven't seen it, Lethal. On the list. Fritz, Fritz <laughs> Lang is the uh, director. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that was a deep cut. I was like, like, as you're describing it, I was like, I feel like I've seen that film. I was like, but it was a long time ago and I don't remember it super well, but that describing that story, I'm like, that is, that is very familiar to something I've seen before. But yeah, no, I, I totally saw the, the 1931 one in, uh, in film school back at, at York university where I narrowly missed going to school with Anita Sarkeesian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think she started uh, just after I left. So uh, we, oh, we, well, we did not, we did not interact, but uh, you we, we, that we did go to the same university, <laughs> but to be fair, it's, it's like a huge university. It's, imagine it's, if you kind of like, the... I, I would rather not imagine that. <laughs> that would, like, uh, imagine that though. Like, Oh, I banged her like years ago. When it, she was like, I mean, hey, like, let, let's let's be very clear. That did not happen. So, like, no, no rumors start. Very clearly, did not. If it did, though, I'm right I mean, now. Mark the cyborg I'm, banged Anita Oh my in. god! For the love of God, you guys, you got, you like, guys no, that, like, that, 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 I did not have sexual we, relations with that. We woman. Do, we do not like we as in like all of the geeks, greater geeks and gamers community, even do not want to. We do not want to be in her crosshairs at all. Because like it, I don't know, it's it, it's bad. Mm-hmm. Like, do, don't don't ever message Anita Sarkeesian directly. Make fun of her, sure, that's fine. But uh, imp- implications like uh, 
that could be interpreted as slanderous and or um, direct harassment is going to do nothing but give her ammunition. And we, right. we, we don't want to do that. Not uh, really. so what you're saying is don't hit tweet. I've got it all tight. <laughs> yes, don't, like, hit tweet. don't hit tweet. Yeah, no, please, please do not. <laughs> I beg you. Okay, I'll just screen cap it and just spam it in chat. Tell you what, you've got, if, if um, did, did Kingdom Hearts come out on the Epic Games Store yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So you've got one year from that release date to get yourself a computer, and I'll buy you a copy on Steam if you do not tweet that. <laughs> it's old. <laughs> See, this is how serious I am about the Epic Game Store exclusivity being horseshit. <laughs> there you go. I'll, I'll put the screen cap. I didn't. I just screen cap it also, without hitting tweet. Also, I, I know he doesn't have a PC, so I'm giving him that year of exclusivity time to get one, and then I will buy him Kingdom Hearts three. See, lethal. You be a good boy. Maybe yeah. Mara banged Anita Sarkeesian back. Oh in the God, day. no! Don't even <laughs> don't even. Let, let's not do that because we're, like, we're we're very liable to get even a, a single person me tooed because of that. <laughs> <laughs> where where there's smoke, she will find uh, social justice yeah. fire. I mean, so I'm honestly like, <laughs> that's fucking brilliant. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm I was honestly surprised I'm not even blocked yet. To be like perfectly honest, I I don't even. I, I guess it would make sense that she has Twitter. I, I don't think I've ever even seen her on Twitter. Like I've I've never mm. taken the Boobama. time to look. Yeah, she up. rarely uses it. So she like. It's kind of like a Bigfoot sighting. She'll jump in to give her input, like stupid input on something, and then like not be on for like a while. Yeah, but, that would make some sense. And yeah. so that, that's all I really wanted to say about the show, since it's I'm kind of coming in at the end. But yeah, I, I really want to watch episode two now. Indeed, and I might have time to go do that now if we wrap this up because uh, X-ray girl, if the lights are off in the apartment. She might actually be. Oh wait, no, I see a shadow moving. Is she doing her workout? She might be working out. I, don't know. I see her like moving up and down, but it's just a shadow. I see. It's really interesting, actually. <laughs> I like, it could be like doing squats. I don't know. Wait. Okay. Now she's pretending to jerk off. <laughs> pretending. She just, like, she just like slid into the door, like wanking at me. I just like, oh, that's that's the woman I love. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah. But you no, know, that part was not on this show. So the, like, the the camera's going this way. The door's over there. You can actually see the door from her camera. But uh, my camera is. We actually we put me here with the camera facing that way specifically so that she could walk in and get to like her closet and like the second bathroom that's like in this room like accessible through because it's basically like the second bedroom of this place, and then. And we were living together for six months and then I proposed to her. So once I proposed to her, she did a face reveal and now she can be on camera. So that, that became less of an important thing. But um, the, 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 her being able to sneak by without being shown up on camera was a big deal to her at first because for the longest time, I guess, I don't know if anyone remembers, X-Ray Girl's face was not revealed. She was uh, nothing but a, mm -hmm. a, a uh, thumbnail on some of Drunk 3 pos streams and that was pretty much it. It was like her with... <laughs> Her hat kind of over her eyes and sticking her tongue out. She was pretty then um, too, though. I gotta get going pretty soon, Mark. Yes, I think we will all get going. So, everyone has any quick last thoughts, or are we all just gonna say goodbye? No, maybe. Um, uh, good. Yeah, maybe. Cool. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, we'll uh, wrap it up. Um, all right. Mark, if you want to uh, get with me at some point during the week, we'll go over kind of what we got for people we wanna bring in on the show. Uh, cool. I know my roommate would like to probably talk about episode six, but that won't be for a few a weeks few anyway. Episodes, yeah. 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 So and we, um, I think the uh, schedule to both Mara and Krista. Krista. Yeah. yeah. So we, we might have Chris on here. Extra girl might catch up and be able to okay. pop on for an episode from time to time. So we, we should, I was have... hoping to keep this anime podcast Asian free, to be honest. Uh, well, I mean, my dogs <laughs> are on it and they're both Asian. So, you know, already mission failed on that one. Um, but yeah, so uh, Mara, I guess if, if you if you are free next week, come on next week because I feel bad that I just saw your your Twitter DM like at the end of this episode. Um, everyone, subscribe to Lethal Lightning on YouTube and Lethal Lightning Gaming, which is going to be very hard for you to search on YouTube uh, or Lethal Gaming. Yeah, it's Lethal Gaming. That's why it's hard because the, there's a lot of there's a lot yeah. of lethal blank gamings on YouTube. I'll crush them, <laughs> Mark. I'll crush them. Yeah, you, you gotta you gotta get that yeah. SEO up. Um, yeah. Mara, I actually I did just uh, upload a, a video before we went live on my on my main channel, which is sweet. why I was a bit late. Uh, so share, go check share, that out. Share the link in the chat so that people can. Oh yeah, sure, mate. 
immediately afterwards. Um, Mara, uh, your your channel's Jade Shadow, correct? Yes. Or am I just saying that? Yeah, because I'm looking at your name here and I'm like, is it Mara Jade or Jade? Shadow? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, everyone subscribed to Mara as well. Oh, Subhuman84 did show up. We talked about you earlier in the episode, Subhuman. And KJ can um, be found nowhere, but I guess on Twitter, where he has an extremely long Twitter handle. Unless, uh, yep. I don't know, like, are you, are you working on something else aside from this show? Eh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> we'll he see. Said the line. I, I, I'm <laughs> thinking about doing a very long form review of Fate Zero, but that is not going to happen until we actually finish the series this because show, yeah. I can't put that up, you know. And so yeah, because I, I wouldn't be able end. to watch it. Yeah. Um, maybe I, I might be able to so. get you on um, Ivan Ortega's anime podcast that he's doing on Geeks and Gamers Premium. Uh, I That's don't know fun. how hard he up is for guests at this point, but Lethal and I both did our episodes that um, ha- aren't out yet. But if you guys go to geeksandgamers.com and uh, create a premium membership, you can see um, the anime podcast we do over there. That is unlike this one. It's not focused on a specific show. It's Ivan runs it. He edits it too. There's no like super chats or anything or interaction with the chat. It's just like recorded episodes. But um, if the plus side to that, as much as there's not quite as much interactivity, is the episodes flow a lot better. Is <laughs> also they're edited by a guy like Ivan, who's a super good video editor. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's it. Unless anyone else has anything to plug. Nope. Uh, no. Nope. No, okay, so uh, next next week, everyone in chat, tell tell you, tell all your friends, watch episodes one and two of Fate Zero, and join us for our discussion of episode two next week. Until then. Yeah. We will see you next time, I guess. I don't know. I don't have a good sign off for this show. Like, uh, seal your fate. There's no fate for what we make for ourselves. (laughs) Thumbs up. All right. Take it easy, everybody. (laughs) And I'm not going to leave the studio this time. Actually ending broadcast. No boo.